Hello, Purple Eagles fans. My name is Todd Kellen from the Niagara Sports Network, and we welcome you to our men's basketball season preview interview. We will take a look at the schedule. We'll look at the roster. We'll talk about how things are going with the team. And to do that, we are very pleased to be joined by Niagara head coach Greg Paulus. Coach, thanks so much for the time. Oh, Todd, this is awesome. Great, great time of the year. Coach in his fourth season now here on Monteagle Ridge. And coach, I guess I, I want to start there. The previous three seasons, probably unlike any other. How about getting <laughs> ready for this fourth season as you went from the end of the semester in May to summer workouts, mm -hmm. now the practice is in full swing. Talk about how it's going. Yeah, there's, there's a lot going on with our program the last few months. A lot of really exciting things. Uh, you know, we have a couple new coaches to our coaching staff with uh, Tyler Kelly and Anton Gray. Uh, we got 10 new faces to the program. And so for us, um, this, is a, this is a really fun time of year for us. We've been able to build some relationships with them, spend the summer with them. We had our preseason, and now we're just kind of in the final stages before uh, our exhibition. There is no substitute for time that you can spend together with the team. I, I have to think, first and foremost, getting to know the players, what buttons to push maybe to get the most out of them. Talk about how you build those relationships. Well, you, you mentioned time. And uh, you know, in order to build those, uh, that trust and that bond, uh, you got to go through different experiences. And for us, with uh, having this many new faces, whether it's the coaching staff or the players, uh, for us, we wanted to get to know them, spend as much time as we could uh, doing work in the community, uh, doing team activities, uh, just having a chance to work them out and learn what they, what they enjoy doing, what they do well, and areas that we can get better at. So it, it's been a really fun uh, experience for us just as, as we've started this process. And coach, a lot of new faces, as you mentioned. We'll start in the backcourt freshman, Shane Lancaster, Bryce Moore, Jalen Brown is a walk-on. Talk about how those freshmen are adjusting to this level. Yeah, you know, having them come with their first college experience and so getting them to uh, work out, to lift, to get into our, our uh, program has been a really good thing for them. Uh, we've seen uh, improvement from them. Uh, they, they bring a lot of energy and, uh, you know, guys that have a little bit of versatility with, with what they can do on the court. Talk about a couple of other transfers into the program, Lance Irving and Braxton Bayless, again, staying in the backcourt. And also, Joe Kasperzak from southeastern Louisiana. I know you're high on each of these fellas. Talk a little bit about what they'll bring. Yeah, I think each bring a, a unique quality to them. Uh, you know, with uh, Braxton and Lance, uh, you know, they've won state championships. They've been to uh, Final Fours at the junior college level. Uh, you know, Joe brings an experience uh, in, in a proven production um, where he averaged almost 11 points a game, um, you know, at, at previous stops he's had. And so, you know, being able to uh, bring in guys that uh, have winning experiences and have winning, winning traits and uh, can bring those to a group that's, that's a very new group coming together. So uh, having that type of experience, uh, playing at the highest level, um, those are things that uh, we've seen uh, as they've been able to go through the summer preseason and, and uh, fall practices. And it's not just new faces in the backcourt. I know one of your freshmen uh, forward for you, Donovan Hill. Talk about Donovan. Yeah, Donovan, uh, he's, he's a six foot eight uh, forward, um, you know, really can shoot the basketball and comes to us from Pennsylvania. So um, he's a guy that uh, was one of the first guys to commit to us and sign with us uh, last fall. And uh, he's, along with those other freshmen we talked about before, getting himself acclimated and learning how to operate on a college campus academically and on the basketball court. A couple other players to go through in that kind of 3-4 spot, Aaron Gray, mm -hmm. and also David Mitchell. David Mitchell coming from Brown. Talk a little bit about Gray and Mitchell and how you get better by adding them. Yeah, both, both bring even more experience. Uh, you know, Aaron is a Division II guy. Uh, had a great season last year at Southern New Hampshire. And, uh, you know, he can really can shoot the basketball, can play different positions. Um, you know, and then um, David Mitchell coming from Brown, grad transfer, um, you know, his experience of playing in the Ivy League, his uh, maturity and leadership, um, you know, so each guy is really, uh, you know, putting their, putting their uh, imprints on the program, using their experiences at other places. And a couple other new faces to talk about. Before we get to the returning mm -hmm. core, we certainly will spend some time talking about those three players. But you've got Keith Kiner, a junior transfer that is going to be down in the middle. And, of course, Harlan, the seven-footer, who was with the club mm -hmm. for the second semester last year. Talk about uh, down in the post. Yeah, I think uh, they had two very different styles. Um, you know, Keith, is uh, he was at a junior college uh, for three years, has junior college experience. And uh, so for him, uh, you know, he kind of gives you a little bit of that versatility, the motor, athleticism, uh, being able to, to rebound and, and make extra effort plays. And, and Harlan uh, is, is more traditional. 
Um, you know, he's done a great job. He was here last year as a red shirt. Um, you know, he came in right after Christmas, took classes in the spring, uh, was able to get himself acclimated to a, a college program, strength and conditioning. And I think having him here last year allowed him really to make progress because he was able to, to be around our program and just see what it's like at the college level. For some of the fans that will get to the Gallagher Center for some games and they'll see Harlan, and if they saw him last year, certainly just his physique has changed. Yeah, he's, he's really done a, a great job committing himself to changing his body. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the fitness and, and uh, what he's done to uh, get himself into better shape so he can therefore make more plays and, and use his size. He moves well for his size. And so um, I, I think it's a credit to our strength conditioning program and also the commitment that Harlan has made to work himself to improve his fitness. Let's talk a little bit about now those three returning players. I want to start with Noah Thomas. In preseason, Mac, second team selection, a player that I thought as the year went on, he took more and more responsibility on his shoulders. Do you look for him to do even more this year? Yeah, we saw great growth from Noah last year. Um, you know, he, he really uh, was able to adapt and learn from his experiences in the first few games of the season, and then we really saw him take off in uh, you know, the, the conference portion of the, of the schedule. So uh, for us, his, his consistency, um, you know, his ability to make plays not only for himself, but others on, on the floor is, is something that, uh, you know, having that experience is something that, uh, you know, we, we need that consistency from, from day one uh, all the way through. A steady contributor, I also thought, for the team last year, Sam Iorio. Does anything that you need him to do, picked up a gold medal in, in the Maccabia games in July. Talk a little bit about Sam as he returns for another season. Yeah, Sam's coming back, and, and this will be his sixth year. And uh, so his experiences, uh, you know, are, are things that, uh, you know, really help him. Uh, he's been through it. He knows uh, what it's about. Um, in terms of his experience at, at the Maccabi Games, winning a gold medal, um, wh what a neat opportunity for him to uh, not only have a chance to have a cultural experience, uh, but to be able to play international basketball, to be able to, uh, you know, he, he talked about how he was able to meet the president. He talked about how he was able to travel throughout the, uh, uh, Israel and just be able to have those experiences that are, are once in a lifetime. So uh, we're really proud of him for, for what he was able to accomplish uh, over this summer. Excellent. Last player returning, Tuba Traore. Mm -hmm. As we round out our look at the Purple Eagles roster here for the 2022-2023 season. Tuba, he shows flashes in past seasons. Talk about how you can get more consistency, a word you like to use, out of Tuba when he's on the floor. Yeah, you know, Tuba's a guy that has uh, size and length. You know, we would love for him to protect the rim and, and finish around the basket. And, uh, you know, the more experience he gets, you can just see him uh, able to understand it and a little bit more be able to apply what we're, what we're looking for. At the beginning of our conversation, Coach, you talked about a couple new assistant coaches mm -hmm. that you've brought in and Coach Antone Gray and also Tyler Kelly. Talk about what they have added to the program already. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, when you come into the gym or you come into the office, um, you know, our, our staff is, is really connected. And it's been really fun to be around them each and every day. Uh, they're bringing different ideas from their experiences. Uh, you know, Antone Gray was at uh, Brown University and uh, Maine, uh, each one for four years, um, you know, and then, um, you know, uh, Tyler, we call him TK. Yeah. Um, you know, he's, he's a former player that's, that won a national championship at the Division II level. Um, you know, he's had different stops at the Division I, uh, Wisconsin Green Bay. Also, he's been a Division II at LeMoyne College and also at Lincoln Memorial, um, you know, which is traditionally a powerhouse at the Division II level. And so they're, they've, they've done a great job getting to know uh, our staff, our, our players, being able to build uh, uh, the relationships and that trust really early is something that was very noticeable. And so they've, they've been able to lift our program. One thing I wanted to ask about, I just thought of this on the fly here, is that been able to drop by a couple of practices and maybe it's the new coaching staff, maybe it's just the players, their own energy. But coach, there is a lot of energy going on <laughs> in those 90 minutes, however long practice is scheduled yeah. for. I think there's, you know, a water break or two, but how has everyone been able to raise their energy so much in practice? I have to think that'll help you out in games. Well, we talk about energy being contagious all the time, and, and we want to kind of create that through, through ourselves, through communication, and, uh, you know, our, our coaching staff is, is an energetic bunch, yeah. and, uh, you know, they set the tone, and, and uh, we have some terrific coaches working with us, and, and, and I think the players feed off of that. And, and on top of that, the players, uh, this is a really competitive group, um, you know, be able to, you know, from one all the way through, uh, you know, the roster, you look at it, and uh, these guys love to compete. They love to get out there, and now we're just trying to teach them uh, how to do it consistently, what it takes, and uh, it, it's different, uh, you know, from different places they've been at, whether that's terminology, 
uh, whether that's system, uh, just playing with that many new guys, um, you know, that, that takes time. And, and that's been uh, really re rewarding to see our growth. Um, but it's also really exciting because we know we have a lot more uh, that we'll be able to grow from as we have more experiences. Quickly on terminology, it's a great point. Do you find that this year you got to say things the second or third time? In the last few years, you had players that could finish your sentences for you. Yeah, I, I think that's a little bit a part of you, you kind of reevaluate yourself as a coach and a staff. Yeah. Um, and it's, hey, do we, do we really know what this means uh, when we say this term? All right, let's revisit it. Let's show an example of it on film. And, uh, you know, when you're talking about some guys that maybe haven't heard that before or uh, done that before, it's the first time they're hearing it. For the other guys that have experience, they might have called it something completely different. And so that, time, that takes a little bit of time and, and going through it where uh, they're able to recognize it and then be instinctual with that communication uh, because we all want to speak the same message. We want to be connected as a group. And uh, when we're communicating and speaking that, that one language, uh, it, it really helps expedite things. And it, as much fun and as, as hard the competition is in practices, I'm sure the team is anxious to, to get up against somebody that doesn't know what the plays are <laughs> and what, the, your opponent, what their teammate is supposed to do on that play. You've got an exhibition game coming up against Roberts Wesleyan. Mm -hmm. And then as we take a look at the schedule, the regular season opener at Maryland on November 7th. Talk a little bit about the anticipation, the excitement leading into a home game, the exhibition game against Roberts Wesleyan. We're excited to uh, have an opportunity to play for someone, play against someone for the first time, uh, put some, you know, our fans and, yep. and uh, Niagara community and campus. Uh, you know, we're still, we're gonna learn a lot about our group. So every time we go through something, exhibition, Okay, well, what's the routine, game day routine? Yeah. How do we prepare for a scout? Okay, you know, hey, we're, we're going through uh, experiences on the court, up a little bit, down a little bit. How do we respond? And I think uh, this is going to be a great learning, not just for uh, our fans, but, but for the coaching staff and for our group and, and our ability to learn how we respond from those successful situations or unsuccessful situations uh, is something that we've spent a lot of time talking about. But our, our schedule is really challenging. Yeah. Uh, you know, we always are, are looking to play those, uh, you know, couple power five teams. We want to play on national, national TV. We want that exposure. We want to play against the best teams. Um, you know, we started a couple home and home series. Um, you know, we have right. a couple home games, uh, which we're, we're excited to kind of get that. And moving forward, we'll be able to have more home games. And then we're having, um, you know, the experience in Ireland where we'll get a chance yes. to play two games, a Sun Mac Challenge. We've never had a chance to do that before, and so uh, I think it'll be uh, really great to, we always talk about holistic development. Develop you on the court as a leader, as a person, academically, and, and that's a part of the Niagara experience in, in our program. And this gives us to have a, have a, have a, a once in a lifetime opportunity experience to, to see Ireland, play some games, uh, see different cultures and learn from other people, and uh, that, that'll, be, that'll be a really neat trip for our program. That, that truly will be uh, a great experience for the players. Another uh, game to highlight on the schedule, November 26th at St. Mm -hmm. John's, Thanksgiving weekend in the, the greater New York area. A great opportunity for Purple Eagle alumni to come out and see the team on the road. How important is that support? Because I look across from my broadcast point and I see a ton of purple behind our bench. Yeah, there, there's a lot of purple. And, uh, you know, we've seen that in, in different games that we've had a chance to play in. Uh, whether it's Syracuse or whether we're on the road at, at Ohio State or, you know, this year uh, opening up at Maryland and St. John's. Um, you know, we, we have such a rich tradition and, and passionate fans, and we're so appreciative of that. And when you go through the history and the numbers uh, between some of these uh, old rivalries and right. historic games, not just for Niagara and the other program, but you look at the whole landscape of college basketball. Um, Niagara, you see Niagara a lot. And, and it's something that we take a lot of pride in. It's really special to be a part of. And I know the, the St. John's, uh, Niagara, the, the two uh, Vincentian schools to get and bring everybody together. Um, you know, I, I think it will really have a chance to bring our community together. Great insight. And coaches, as, as we wrap things up, and I know it, you, you do look at things maybe on a, a, a practice to practice uh, mm -hmm. level and maybe drill to drill, but any, any goals that you can share with us here today? Any team goals or individual goals perhaps that, uh, that you've looked to you know, emphasize with the club this year? Yeah, I think for right now, it's, it's, uh, I don't want to talk about what we're going to do. I'd like okay. to talk about how we're going to do it. Okay. And, and so for us, the, the ability to be consistent is something that, that, that is our goal. And we talk about it each day. So 
uh, as individuals, we're, we're, we become dependable. We become accountable. We know that each practice, each game, uh, we're going to get the best version each night in, each night out of everybody on the team. And, and everybody has a role. And we want everyone to embrace that role, be a superstar in that role. And when that happens, the team is able to grow and keep taking steps forward. And so we've spent a lot of time uh, with our team uh, teaching how to make winning plays, teaching how we uh, prepare, teaching how we approach things, and, and continuing to try to develop some of those habits that, that aren't there yet, um, but we're learning and we're getting better. And so if we could be better today than we were yesterday, be better tomorrow than we were today, we're going to have a chance to see how we can become the best versions of ourselves in the future. How excited are you for this season to get ready, <laughs> Coach? Last thing, I'm, I'm ready to go. Let's do it. You got me fired up. How much are you looking forward to jumping it up? Yeah, I, I'm, uh, I'm really excited for us. I mean, it's one, it's this time of year, the fact that we're having this conversation yep. and we've had a chance to see it throughout the summer and you've come through different points and, you know, you look at it, it's, it's, it's June, all right? all right? It's the end of the summer, okay? It's preseason, okay? It's the start of practice. And now as we're getting closer and you're going to be watching other games on television, you're, you see the NBA has started up, and now we have a chance here this week coming up, which, uh, you know, we're looking forward to seeing all the uh, – the fans and the community and campus coming together. Um, you know, I, th I think it's just a really exciting time, and you only get so many opportunities uh, to do this, whether nice. uh, you're, you're a student athlete, you get four or five years, you get uh, a, one group together for one season, and so um, we're working hard to make the, the Niagara community very proud. Well, Coach, we appreciate the insight. Thanks so much for the time, and best of luck this season. Thank you, Tom. Folks, that'll do it for our look at the Purple Eagles men's basketball team here at Niagara University. Don't forget, the exhibition will be Tuesday, November 1st at the Gallagher Center against Roberts Wesleyan with a 7 p.m. tip. And then the regular season opener on the road at Maryland, Monday, November 7th. For head coach Greg Paulus, my name is Todd Callen. Have a great day, everyone.